Everybody to the Raggers Report, Iona's number one New York Rangers podcast. I am Vin. He is Tiv. You know, how have you been? What have the Rangers really been up to? You know, the season started a couple months. The season started about a month ago. You know what? Have, they really haven't been too good. I would say I've been all right. The Rangers, yeah. on the hand, quite the opposite. Let mm. me tell you something there. Uh, just very disappointing start to the season so far in a conference that I'm mean, not conference in a division that is very loaded right off the gate. You have uh, the Capitals, the Bruins, that def- uh, I believe the defending Eastern. No, they're not the defending Eastern Conference champs. It's two years ago. Um, the Islanders who picked up game, the Devils who are playing um, way over their projection right now. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of teams right now that are playing well, and the Rangers have not picked up that slack. Uh, whether it's goaltending or scoring, like they just can't find, they just can't find their their niche yet. Yeah, and you know when you talk about you know them finding their niche, it's you know mainly on the offensive side, you know of the ice because you look at what their top stars have been doing. Obviously, Panarin leads the team. Five goals, ten assists, leads them in fifteen points. But if you look at that top line of Zabanajad, Kreider, and Buchnevich, they really haven't been doing much. Especially Zabanajad and Kreider, who last year they threw a ton of money at Kreider to stay in New York, and Zabanajad had a breakout season. He scored 40, 40 something goals, I think, and he had that five goal game after the season stopped against Washington. And you know we saw it also in the play round against Carolina. Their offense is struggling and it's it's and until they get back on track they're not they're not going anywhere in that in the stack division that you talked about uh, the one positive i can take away is the bulk of the rangers offense is coming from the bottom the bottom six so seeing your guys on the lower end producing in that way guys like gotier and you got like guys that are stepping up on low contracts that's a very good thing to see but you hit the nail on the head our top lines our top guys panarin and uh Mika, who we are giving a lot of money to, and especially Kreider we just paid, the Rangers are not getting the production they need out of those top guys, and that's really what's coming down to. That's a big reason why our start is not as good as we want it to be. And yeah, I, like, it's also just like on power plays, like the power play struggle is still there. On special teams, they can't get anything to work. They look for the pass when the shot option is right there, and they can just leave. Like that's been the story of the New York Rangers for the past, what, decade? Hmm. Passing out of open looks. Yep. Exactly. A hundred percent. You know, it's the dump and chase. It's the, it's the players being too, almost too selfless. They're being, they, you know, sometimes you got to be selfish and you got to shoot the puck. But you were talking about those, those bottom tier guys. You know, kind of stepping up, and you've seen that too. You know, guys like Colin Blackwell and Kevin Rooney, and you know those bottom two lines that you, you know you were you mentioned. They're the guys that are really stepping up and carrying this offense. Panarin is obviously Artemi Panarin, but you know you also look at Lafreniere and Kako. You know it seems like they're getting chances every day. They just can't put the puck in the back of the net. And then you know you look on the other side of the zone and we switch our focus to the defense, which has been actually pretty good. You know you have Jacob Truba and Ryan Lindgren, Adam Fox, who is shined as probably one of the best defensemen for the Rangers, one of the best young defensemen in the league. And then you have. Their their newest defenseman, the, the rookie that they just called up to start the season, uh, K. Andre Miller, and this guy he's a, he's a real special player. I mean, for Wisconsin he was everywhere on the ice, amazing defender. He's tall, tall guy. He's got this. He's got long, long arms. He's got a long stick. He's got a ton of reach, and he's just he just plays defense so eloquently. He just doesn't take a lot of penalties, and he just you know. He just he seems to disrupt almost every play when he's on the ice. He he is one of the more special players to watch on this team. He it's not just like the heart that he has, but it's how effortless he plays. He he will go from one side of the ice to the other like it's nothing, and he'll do it in remarkable speed. He is really I don't, I want to say kind of the heart of this team, or at least he's developing into the heart of this team. He he plays outstanding just about anywhere on the ice. Um, He's been a very big bright spot for this team, and I'm. I think it's safe to say he's one of the favorites to win the Calder. I don't know if that's. I don't think it's too out there to say that he's. He's one of the top rookies in the NHL this year, let alone one of the best Rangers defensemen, in a, oh, wow. in a area of, that the Rangers have needed help in for how many years? 
Yeah, a hundred percent. And even you know, he has a goal and three assists on the season. You know that that doesn't really matter when you look at what he's been doing on the, on the defense. And, Co- and coach David Quinn has been putting the guys against. He's been playing defense against these top stars on opposing teams, guys like Crosby, guys like Ovechkin, you know, in the games that I've watched when he, they go up against, you know, these top teams with these top guys, Ke'Andre Miller's usually on the ice, just harassing everybody on the ice, yet poking the puck away, clearing the puck. He's just, he's just a phenomenal player. Yeah, absolutely. We, they really hit the nail on the head with um, this pick and it, drawing up now, uh, not drawing up, uh, bring him up now was def, I, I believe definitely the move. I think this was the right time to bring him up. Maybe even we could have brought him up earlier, but out of like the core three young guys, I'd say Keandre Miller, Alexis Lafrede, and Capo Caco, he has really stood out in his rookie year. And I'm not willing to like throw away Caco and Lafrede. Like you said earlier, they're, they're getting chances and a lot more this year than last year for Caco at least. Oh yeah. They're just not being able to put the puck in the net. But I have liked what I have seen out of them. They just, are on the short end of some ridiculous plays by goaltenders and defensemen. So I think in time, their stats will reflect how much they're improving and how good they actually are. But while they're still getting that chance, we have Keandre over here who is just lining it up on all cylinders. Oh yeah. He is going to be the the, the, the leader of this team, especially the leader of the defensive unit in a couple of years if he keeps up this play. and. You know, if they can fix their offense, they could they could be a contender in this division, a division which is stacked. But if they don't fix the offense, they're just going to flop. And then the question is going to rise: Is David Quinn really the right guy to you know coach this team? That's that's a very good that's a very good question. The question Rangers have been asking themselves for a while. It just seems like we haven't had the right fit since what Tortorella. Yeah, I mean, even, he, he was even okay when they had a little bit of time, but then he he washed out. I mean. The Rangers have just been looking for that guy um, at coach for such a long time. And it's also just like the culture, because like our stars aren't playing. Our, the four guys with A's, they're the ones that are not producing. Mm-hmm. I think we also haven't had a captain so long. I don't know if that's solely his decision, but like, I feel like you also just need a guy to just go to and you have that one, like the C on that list. Also, I think Keandre, maybe sometime in the future. Maybe you're talking about him wearing that C just because of how much he's even playing right now as a rookie. Yeah. What about later on? So this might be a guy who could be captain the Rangers someday. But yeah, going he- back to Quinn, yeah, this is this is going to be a hard look in the mirror for the Rangers in the next coming weeks to see like if they can improve or not. And if they can't, I think we just need to look somewhere else at head coach. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about the coaches, they – Tortorella was a really good coach, and then they you know, hired Alain Vigneault, and you know he seemed like a good fit for a little bit. But then the team started to deteriorate, and that after you know the Stanley Cup Finals loss, after the Eastern Conference Finals loss to the Lightning, you know they started to go downhill. And I think with David Quinn, he's playing too passive. You know he needs to play more aggressive on the offense. But what are you going to do? That's also a role I feel like the captains have to, well, assistant captains have to bring up. Just be like, hey, like. We get the puck, we gotta shoot it. Like, yeah, can't be, can't be trying to find the perfect look. Like, you just gotta get a good look, because we passed up so many good, great, maybe even perfect looks to try and get the extra pass, and it's not worth it. Yep, you just gotta get pucks on that, and that's all it is. Really said. Thank you all so very much for watching the Rags Report. I have been Vin. He has been Tiv. See you all next week.